we don't need to condemn people that they walk in by, by, by their flesh and they doing things. You know what I mean? We need to teach people by our own example that we do not retaliate like that. We do not fight. We do not fight. We have to walk by the spirit and meekness and wisdom. That's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, the fire will come in our life to test us, and we will see how we're going to behave. When the fire comes in into people's lives, most of them, they leave the church and go to another. Right? Right? Well, there will be fire over there because God can catch you or anybody everywhere. You can't get away un until we learn. So remember, it's not about the pastor. It's not about the church. It's not about people. It's not about the country that you live. It's not about the economy. It's not about your neighbors. It's not about your dogs, your house, your anything. It's not about your grass. It's all about you. It's not about the weather. It's all about, the, it's all about you. We blame on the weather. I don't feel good today because, oh my God, it's been raining. What's wrong with this? For three days. Yeah. God says, I'll give it, I'll, 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 I'll throw some, some snow in July. See what's going to say. I'll just cover the country with snow in July. And guess what? 75% people, they, they, they don't go to church. It's snowing in July. I'm not going. I'm not going. See, that's the fire. That's the test. Because it's not about the snow. It's not about the rain. It's about us. It's about my personal encounter with God. You see, you're going to laugh. But Adam had nobody to blame until Eve was born. <laughs> he could have blamed the animals. He could have blamed the trees, but everything was perfect. He was by himself and God. Who could he blame? But as soon as Eve was born, you gave me that woman. Right away. It's not my problem. It was, it was her problem first. You see, and he blamed God that he gave him that woman. Hello? Isn't that funny? How can I get away from that nature? God says, easy. I gave you nine fruit of the Spirit. Exchange them one by one. Install them into your life. If you will find yourself at peace with everybody, then you'll live longer. You know, there was a little girl. Listen, there was a little, listen to me carefully. There was a little girl, three years old, standing at the table and eating cookie after cookie and a candy after candy. Well, elderly lady, her auntie, came and she said, Honey, do you know that uh, eat so much cookies and, and sweet? It's not good for your teeth. It's not good for your health. But she looked at her little eyes and said, but my grand-grandmama, she lived up to 96 years old. And she said, and she ate cookies and candies. She said, no, but she mind her own business. <laughs> you understand? She mind her own business. That's why she lived longer. This is what it is. Let's mind our own business and work on ourselves. We're going to live much longer. I guarantee that. Praise be to Jesus. <laughs> Do you see the problem? Do you see the problem? Now? You know, a lot of people, even doctors said, say that people that are under stress, they live less. When people live under stress all the time, they worry. 
They always get into somebody's life. Mind somebody else's business. That creates horrible sickness, you know. That kills people. Paul begged people and he said, if it's possible, be at peace with every man. <laughs> he knew it's possible, but he said, if it's possible in the midst of you, be at peace with every man. By the way, <clears throat> another thing, people will try to attack you. You have to know how to avoid that. Because it's the same problem. When people are attacking you, don't get into fight. I'm glad that God says, vengeance is mine and I shall repay. <laughs> I'm so glad. Because I didn't know that before. In my Jewish tradition, they said they smack you on one cheek, you go another, give them another one. So they give you one, you, you retaliate. Tooth for a tooth, eye for an eye. But Jesus said, don't do that. Don't do that. You're not going to win nothing. You're not going to prove nothing. You're not going to bring peace that way. You just will aggravate the situation. Leave things alone and don't talk about it. Turn the page of, of that book to the next one. You see what I mean? You will live longer. I mean today, God is adding to you at least another 10 years of life. <laughs> Honestly, you'll be happy. You see, we need to live by the Spirit of God knowing that it's only God who can sustain our life, give us answers, heal our bodies, supply our needs, and do everything. Don't depend on people. Not even your boss, not even your company. It's God who keeps everything alive in His hands. So don't worry about anything. Jesus said, why you worry? Look at the birds. They find food every day. They don't care. Lilies of the valleys, look at them. They, they dress beautifully, even better than Solomon was dressed. So what, do you think you're least of them? Don't worry. Be at peace. Live a peaceful life. Choose friends for yourself. Choose your fellowship. Don't jump in and say, hey, buddy, you are brothers and sisters, come on, let's go. That can damage you for a long time. Be careful. Be anxious for nothing. I could bring you tons of scriptures to teach wisdom like that. Amen. Hallelujah. So, verse 16, look at this. It says, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? And that is the absolute truth. We are the temple of God where the Spirit of God dwells. You can be at peace at all times. You can be so anointed. You can be so at, you can have such a joy because you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you. So don't allow your temple to be open for any other reasons. Hallelujah. Look at this, verse 18. Let no one deceive you or himself. See, we don't have to actually, I love the scripture even more because it says, we don't have to wait for anybody to deceive us. We can deceive ourselves. See what I mean? 
you can be a, your own deceiver. And the devil will have nothing to do with this. It says, let no one deceive himself. If anyone seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. God is not a creator of wars. God protects his people. And he has to fight if somebody is attacking him. But God is not a creator of wars. God is not a creator of divisions. God is not a creator of divorce. God is not a creator of sickness. God is not a creator of anything that is evil. But the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God because this is what happens in this world. Everything that what I said is happening in this world not by the will of God. But Satan, the world, sin, the flesh, and all these things. Are you kidding? You want to yield to that? Really? For it is written, He catches the wise in their own craftiness. God will catch the wise, that per person think that he is wise, you know, in the world, maybe because of the education, because of this and that, and yet he cannot hold his tongue, he cannot hold his character, he cannot do anything right, according to what I say, he cannot keep peace with people. That's what God is all about. Not our really education, how much mathematics that we know, how much we can achieve with our goals and our talents. No, it, it is who we are, how we behave. How we submit to the authorities, how we really live with each other, how we behave with the husband and wife. Are we honoring each other? Are we choosing wise things in our life to do the right way? That's what God is all about. Are you with me? Amen. And again, verse 12, 20 says, The Lord knows. He knows the thoughts of the wise in the world. He knows the thoughts. That they are futile. Futile. Glory to God. Therefore, let no one boast in men. And I check that word, and that means, let no one boast in their own flesh. Flesh will never allow you to be at peace with any, any man. Flesh belongs to the world and all its characteristics. But it's your spirit man that God is building the foundation upon. It's your spirit man that will actually show up and show that ingredients that you are built with. That you have enough salt and pepper and garlic. I love garlic. <laughs> but do you understand what I mean? People say that they walk in by love. False love. It's not the agape love, because uh, to reach to the point to walk with agape love, you have to have fruits of the Spirit manifesting as an ingredient in our life. You know that forgiveness is one of the fruits of the Spirit as well? You can have a homework tonight and read in Galatians chapter 5, the fruits of the Spirit. What are they? Ask yourself a question. Between you and God, don't even bother me or anybody else to test. You and God, ask yourself a question if all the fruits of the Spirit are there manifesting. See that verse I never understood until now. Therefore, verse 21, Therefore let no one boast in the flesh, for all things are yours. What does it mean? It means in your power to deal with. 
whether Paul or apostles or Cephas or of the world or the world of life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. So you will have the power to deal with these things accordingly if you have enough wisdom to do it by the word of God. So you can treat apostle, apostle Paul would be alive, you can treat him as an apostle or you can trample him down as people try to do. You can submit to the authorities of your pastor or you don't have to. It's all in your power. But the works will show later. It will be manifested. Do you see what I mean? It's all in our power what we want to do. Whether uh, Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world, how you deal with the world, how you deal a uh, word, of, uh, word, word of life or death or things present or things to come. It's, it's, God says it's all yours. It's up to you how you deal with these things. And verse 22 says, and you are Christ's, and Christ is God. You belong to him, and the Messiah belongs to God himself. So this is what it's all about, how me, we make a decision. And my job is to give you an explanation to make a right decision, a wise decision. You may take it, you may not. We have the Word of God that will teach us. And when you open in the Bible and see these things, it's up to you if you will apply or not. Because that's the only way that you build in your own foundation in your life. You see, we thought that Christ is our foundation. As soon as, as, soon as yeah, I, I received Christ, my foundation is built. No. The foundation is laid. But you have to build the foundation. You may build the foundation even on Christ very weak. And you may build the foundation in Christ very strong. And then build upon it. You see the difference? So don't get deceived. Don't stop growing. Don't put your hands down and say, Oh, I'm born again. Everything is good. That's it. I'm under grace. God, the power of God is upon me. I feel sometimes goose, uh, you know, uh, uh, bumps and stick. Praise be to That's not the indication. The very indication of your foundation is your character. You know, I was so stupid when I was born again. I mean, so worldly. I was so foolish. I was talking to the pastor of big church, seven, eight hundred people. And I, you know, I was foolish enough not to respect him and this and that. And I was in his office. I came to his office to share what I think about the church. And I was one month in the Lord. Something familiar? He was very patient with me. Thank God for his mercy. He was very patient with me. And when, when I was spilling out all my feelings and all my mentality here, you know, he said, Gennady, how do you know that you're right? And you know what I told him? Because I feel his presence, I said, when I pray. He says, that's his mercy on you. Not because you're right, but because of his love, and he's still merciful. But it doesn't mean that you're right. Oh, no, if I feel his presence, it means I'm right. Goodbye. Isn't it ridiculous? Today I'm standing on his place. And preaching the same thing to you. It's not about what we feel. Even if God would heal your toe or ear, it doesn't mean that you are 100% perfect. It's His mercy. If God has answered your prayer, it doesn't mean that everything is good. It's because of His mercy. But our very indication is only in one thing. Our character, faithfulness. Amen. You understand? 
I've learned that lesson way after it came to me. And God was patient enough to lead me a couple of years through to understand what he meant and to rebuild my life, though I wasn't Christ, my friends. I wasn't Christ. A Jewish man was born again. Oh, my. This is a gift, isn't it? A Jewish man is born again. It's a gift. Even Jewish people, if they are born again, they need to be rebuilt all over again. Because the character and everything else that came from the world must be delivered. As Paul said, I'm not, not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the power of salvation to both, to those who believe. The power of salvation to those who believe, to the Jewish people first and then to the Greeks. They all need to be saved. That's where, what, what, where my mistake was. But I've learned that, and I'm sharing with you the same principles, friends. Be careful. Work out your salvation with fear and trem fear of what? Fear of doing something, to do something wrong against the Lord. The fear of the Lord is different. Work on your life so that God would be able to feed you with solid food. Make, make sense? I hope you enjoyed that telecast, friends, as you're watching on television and on internet. And my desire is, as God's desire was as, I, 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 as well, I guess, for this Shabbat is to share with you His very simple mind, but very powerful, that will set you free if you will apply it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, that you can speak to us without us being aggravated or hurt, but that we may understand your very principle. And we want to thank you, Lord God, for your goodness and mercy, for your word, for the depthness of your truth in the word of God that you can unveil to us and show. Lord, we are still on the way of building our lives each and every day and we need your help we need your forgiveness we need your touch we need your spirit to do that <clears throat> we need your word oh god we need you and i pray in the name of yeshua for everyone who is watching and for those who are with us today Help us, Lord, to submit, 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 submit to your truth that will set us free. Jesus, you said yourself, you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Father God, to be free, it's not just to be free outside, it's to be free within, in our heart, in our character, that we will not get offended at people because that will bring sickness upon us, that we will be able to forgive We'll be able to walk in freedom and liberty and peace with everyone, even with our enemies. Lord, you want us to live healthy in the spirit. You want us to be free. With long life, you want that to satisfy us. And I pray, help us to do so. Bless us today and may your word deeply impact our life. In Yeshua's Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. God bless you. And shalom to you. Have a blessed day in the Lord. You know, when the Lord knew he was going to the cross, this was his prayer, that we would all be one. We've come together as one.
thirsty Come and glorify Yeshua Oh, come and magnify the Lamb of God Oh, come and glorify Yeshua Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you have made a way for us to come. Lord, you came and gave your very life as a sacrifice so that we could come clean. House of David, Jewish Messianic Ministry is produced and sponsored by viewers like you. We appreciate your support, which is allowing us to continue to broadcast our programming. Thank you, and God bless you. Shalom.